Good evening, friends, and welcome to you in the name of the Lord. It's great to be in God's house with you tonight. And our announcements are as follows. Just two. One, the Easter flower form is available, so if you'd like to order lilies, pink azaleas, or yellow mums for Easter, this is the form to use. It's out there on the table. And second, uh, our Trinity prayer ministry is going to come back. We used to call it our emergency prayer ministry, where if there is an urgent prayer request that you have, uh, you would initiate a phone tree. Well, we're going to start it back, but we're going to use email. So if you'd like to be on the Trinity prayer ministry, you can sign up on the sheet that looks like this, but out there on the welcome table in the narthex. Uh, good evening, Howard Eggert. Good evening, Richard Rodice. Thank you for being with us and leading us in our worship from the music side of the house. Our uh, worship tonight begins with the opening hymn, Christ the Life of All the Living. <laughs> Whose sin is covered. 
Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. For when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me, my strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. I acknowledge my sin to you, and I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. As we come together to worship in the presence of God, we confess our sins and seek God's grace and mercy. Isaiah was given a vision of God enthroned in the temple, and the prophet was frightened by what he saw. He knew that he was a sinner in the presence of the holy God of Israel. With the prophet, we acknowledge and confess our sins to God and ask for his forgiveness. Almighty God, we know that we are sinners. We do not obey your holy law. We follow our sinful desires and listen to the temptations of the world around us. The prophet confessed that he was unclean. We too are unclean. We have sinned against you in our thoughts, words, and actions. Have mercy on us and forgive us. An angel touched the prophet's lips with a coal from the altar of sacrifice and said, Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. Isaiah's guilt was taken away. His sins were forgiven. As God showed grace to the prophet, he has shown his grace to us through Jesus' atoning death. I announce to you that your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I acknowledge my sin to you, and I did not cover my iniquity. I said I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. The prophet Isaiah was forgiven, and sent out to proclaim the message of God's judgment and grace. We too are forgiven and sent out to serve and to witness in Jesus' name. With the prophet, we answer God's call. Here I am, send me. Let us pray. Almighty God, your amazing grace was displayed in the life of the prophet Isaiah. His guilt was taken away and his sins forgiven. You have, in grace, forgiven us through the atoning sacrifice of Jesus our Lord. You have called us to live in love and service toward others. As we go about our daily lives, help us by your Spirit to share with others the love of Jesus and the promise of salvation through faith in his name. Hear our prayer and accept our praise. In the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen.
from the prophet Isaiah chapter 6, beginning with the first verse. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim, each had six wings, with two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the thresholds shook at the voice of him who called. And the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips, your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our epistle reading is from Romans chapter 10. St. Paul writes to the church at Rome, How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news! But they have not all obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what he has heard from us? So faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We continue with the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the ninth chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. And Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, Pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
In the name of Jesus, amen. Have you ever been despaired? Has there ever been a time when you wrestled with hopelessness? Have you ever found yourself in a place where you felt like you cannot find the light because you feel trapped in darkness? If so, you are not alone. Many people of faith have gone through such times along with the rest of humanity. As Christians, we understand that we are not alone in those times. We believe and trust in Emmanuel, God who is with us. And God's word speaks to our soul and spirit in times of despair, speaks a message of hope and comfort. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Israel needed a message of hope and comfort. Do you? A time would come for the people of Israel when the good old days of the kingdom would be a distant memory. There would be no more boasting of that great city of Jerusalem and its temple. For these would be leveled in the ruins of war. And the only ones to rule over them were the kings of foreign lands. This would be the time of exile, a time of despair. You know the story. The nation of Babylon travels down to Israel, conquers Israel, and carries off Israel back to Babylon in exile. To make matters worse, they knew that their exile was the righteous judgment of God for sins they had committed. Everything they are experiencing could have been prevented. They were warned. The prophets of Israel warned that a day of judgment was coming when they would be held accountable. Accountable for their sin for their injustices against the poor and the marginalized, for their false worship of other gods, and for their vain boasting in their own superiority and accomplishments. So this is what had happened. The nation of Israel, you know, long, long past the Exodus, now found themselves in Israel, and enjoying life. And as they enjoyed life, those who were wealthy and powerful began to treat the lowly and the poor with contempt. They would not give them justice or treat them fairly. We know that their neighbors and their neighbors' gods were a temptation. They were tantalizing to the Israelites, and indeed they were carried off into foreign worship. And more than that, they began to boast about their own accomplishments. That the things that you can see around Israel was because of how great they were, and, and how they have accomplished all these things on their own. The prophets of the one true God were ignored, ridiculed, rejected, repelled, repulsed. Then the day of judgment came, and the exile of Israel into Babylon weighed heavily upon their spirits. Their days were filled with emptiness, and their hearts were filled more and more with anguish. But then, but then a new word, a word of grace, a word of hope, a new message to them through the prophet Isaiah. Unlike the other prophetic messages of the past through Isaiah, God promised and proclaimed a message of amazing grace. 
Comfort, O oh, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Good news is delivered to repentant Israel in exile. God will not leave his people in despair. God's word speaks hope for their future. God's word to his children through Isaiah declares an end to the chains in exile and declares instead that all prisoners of despair and judgment will be set free. Can you imagine? Can you imagine being an Israelite in Babylon? I, I lived there for a while. Well, close to there. I have visited Babylon three times. I know what it's like right there along the Euphrates River. By the way, when I was there, you think mosquitoes are bad here? They are awful on the banks of the Euphrates in Babylon. I mean awful. It's not a good place. They are in despair, but then they receive the words of hope, of comfort. But there's more. <coughs> God's word declares that their journey to freedom, their release from exile, their journey from Babylon back to Israel, will be seen before the eyes of all humanity as a testimony of God's grace. So you can imagine the journey from Israel. You all know where Israel is on the map, and you all know where Iraq is on the map, right? So imagine that journey of shame from Israel to Babylon, and then staying in exile, but then receiving God's word of grace and promise. Imagine that trip home. Imagine the joy. Imagine the hope. Imagine the celebration along the way. And it was a witness to the other nations as they passed through their lands on their way back. A voice cries out, Isaiah writes, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Isaiah describes how the wilderness will be transformed how this desert place will become a place of new life. Instead of a land of dryness and loneliness, God will make of it a place of beauty and streaming rivers. Isaiah writes about this, I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my chosen people, for the Lord will comfort Zion he will comfort all her waste places and will make her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the voice of song. It is hard, if not impossible, to be thankful or to sing when you are experiencing despair loneliness, or hopelessness. You wonder if joy will ever be possible. But remember, with God, all things are possible. God's children travel from Babylon to Jerusalem. And when this joyous journey across the wilderness reaches its destination and home is in sight, the people raised their voices in praise to God who filled them with grace. Isaiah says, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might 
and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. This is the, the grace of God that comes to the nation of Israel after they have repented, after they have returned to the Lord and said, we need you, we believe in you, we trust in you, we hope for your word of mercy. God delivers through Isaiah amazing, amazing grace. We know of another prophetic voice, don't we? A voice who cried out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. The voice of John the Baptist, he pointed to Jesus as the Savior. Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, he said. Jesus, the Christ, is the living word of God. Isaiah the prophet spoke of the Messiah to come. John the Baptist, the prophet, pointed to Jesus and said, He is the Messiah. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Isaiah spoke of the promised Savior. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. Jesus, the living word of God, comes with a message of comfort, of hope, of life. To all who are desperate and defeated, his light shines in the darkness. Isaiah writes, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in the darkness. The nation of Israel were imprisoned. They were exiled. They were experiencing the consequences of sin. They were in their own physical desert place, despairing and alone. People, humans, who are apart from God are also in a desert of loneliness, despairing, exiled from God, shackled by sin and in need of words of grace. The promise that comes, the promise that Jesus delivers, the hope in the message of salvation does not come cheaply. Jesus, the living word of God, does not only accompany us through the wilderness of our sin, but follows the path that will lead him to the cross. Isaiah says of the Messiah, he had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity, and as one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him of no account. We follow this suffering servant, Jesus, to the cross so that we might behold his saving grace. We trust that he was willing to pay a great price for our sakes in order that we all might be made whole in his righteousness and healed from all our despair. Isaiah writes of the Messiah, 
Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. To be sure, in our own lives we experience the despairing wilderness of sin. We confess that we have sinned. We know that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned in our thoughts, words, and deeds. But sin does not have the final answer. Sin is not the last word for our life. Despair is never where God wants us to live and wallow. No, the good news comes from Jesus. And it is a word of amazing grace. I have traveled to the cross for you. And at the cross, I lay down my life. I give my life. I shed my blood for you. And the blood of Jesus covers our sin. No, the blood of Jesus washes away our sin and our sin is counted against us no more we are forgiven we are renewed we are given new life through the lamb of god this is amazing grace that god would love us so much that he sends his son to accomplish what we could never accomplish Jesus is the free gift of God for our salvation. His blood shed on the cross is shed for us. Whenever our thoughts become dark and we are dying in the wilderness of our sin, whenever we are caught in the depths of despair and the harsh isolation of exile, whenever we cannot imagine anything possibly good for our lives and all of our plans seem to go to waste and we get overcome with our own sinfulness. Whenever this happens, this is when Jesus comes to us and says, you belong to me. You are my child and I have given my life for you. My blood was shed for you. And instead of defeat and despair, there are sure and certain signs of comfort and joy, healing and hope. All of this is ours through faith in Jesus Christ. By faith we are saved. In God's grace, God's amazing, amazing grace. Amen.
We confess our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, your grace is the favor you show to undeserving sinners, just as you showed grace to the prophet Isaiah and forgave his sins. You have forgiven us for the sake of Jesus, our Savior. Gracious Lord, have mercy on us and hear our prayer. Almighty God, during this season of Lent, a time of repentance, we remember that Jesus was sacrificed for our sins on the altar of the cross. As Isaiah's sins were burned away with the coal from the temple altar, our sins are washed away in Jesus' blood. Gracious Lord, have mercy on us and hear our prayer. Almighty God, we pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ who are suffering illness, sorrow, and grief. Lead us by your Spirit to comfort them with the promises of your Holy Word and to bring help to them in their time of need. Gracious Lord, have mercy on us and hear our prayer. Almighty God, Isaiah was quick to answer your call. You sent him out with the message of your power and love. You asked, Whom shall I send? Bless the pastors, teachers, missionaries, and others who answered your call and said, Here I am, send me. Watch over them and protect them as they proclaim the gospel of salvation. By the power of your Spirit, extend your kingdom through the preaching of the good news. Gracious Lord, have mercy on us and hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have forgiven our sins. Now, by the power of your Spirit, make us bold witnesses for our Savior. You ask, whom shall I send? Lead us to answer with joy. Here I am. Send me. Have mercy on us and hear our prayer. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.
Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.